So what we want to do in this case is we want to make sure that we set it up. Now, if you guys remember like what I showed in the last example, it might be helpful to, again, just set this equal to 0 so you can solve, because students will make these mistakes all the time. Okay? Just be careful that your potential 0 that you're using for synthetic division is not 1. Like you got to make sure you guys write this stuff in the standard form that it's in. Okay? Um, and that's one of the more common mistakes that I'll see students do. So just go through the extra steps if you need to and write that out. Now the next one is, so therefore I'm going to place a 1 out there. Now we notice, guys, we're missing some values, right? We don't have an x cubed. We don't have an x squared. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to write those with zeros, plus 0x zero cubed, plus 0x squared, plus x, plus 1. And there's nothing wrong with writing 0x cubed or 0x squared, right? Nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's still 0. It's not changing anything. But for synthetic division, it's, it's um, very important. You have to have it to make sure that the synthetic division works. All right. For, for long division, it was just kind of like a preference to put the place values there. But for synthetic division, it has to work. It has to go that way. Um, so again, bring down the first one, which is a freebie. 1 times 1 is going to be 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Z remember, we add on the vertical and multiply on the di diagonal. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. No? Yes. We're oh, that's a negative 1 right there, right? So that becomes a 0. 0 times 1 is 0. There you go. Thank you. Good catch. Yes? This one good? No? All right. So if we look at this, guys, we have our remainder constant, coefficient of our linear, coefficient of our quadratic, coefficient of our cubic, coefficient of our quartic. All right? So if we wanted to write the quotient, we would say this is x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared minus x, um, and then plus, I forgot to do this. Oh, we didn't have a remainder. Remember, just like long division, we can take the remainder and then put it over our divisor. All right? But what I asked you guys to do was to apply synthetic division and then check your answer using the remainder theorem. So if we're going to say like this is our dividend, we'll just call this f of x, if I want to check my answer, all I have to do is plug in my potential 0. It's not a 0 because I have a remainder, right? Yes? This is not a factor of that. It doesn't divide evenly. But the remainder theorem doesn't, doesn't need to be a 0 factor. The remainder theorem just states whatever the remainder was, if you plug that value back into the equation, you're going to have the exact same value. So I'm just going to plug in f of 1. Yes, was that it? I don't know, something else. I don't need to ask you that question. Never mind. 1 to the fifth minus 2 to the 1 to the fourth plus 1 plus 1. So let's see if we go ahead and get 1. So we have 1 minus 2 times 1 is just minus 2, plus 1, plus 1. Negative 1, you guys can see, again, the remainder theorem helps us check our answer once again. Yes, the remainder theorem is awesome. You should like the remainder theorem. But now we're going to bring in a different problem. So let me ask you guys a question. 